Reconciliation. It's a word that you're familiar with, um, but we get it confused with other things sometimes. For that reason, because this is such an integral part of our life together in the Christian church, and because it's so often confused for other things uh, for uh, a while, I'm going to do something a little different with theological leftovers. Um, instead of focusing on things that I heard in the reading, I'm going to go through a whole list of passages with you. Just hopefully brief little videos, even briefer than usual. And um, and I want to just go through passage after passage after passage with you to make sure that, that we're on the same page and we understand what the Bible really has to say about this important work of, of reconciliation um, and brothers dwelling in unity in the church and what that means exactly. Our goal should be not just to resolve conflict, because you can resolve conflict in all kinds of ways, and some of those ways aren't good. Instead, our goal um, is reconciliation, to, to be reconciled with God, to be reconciled with one another. And so that's what we want to look at, especially that second part, having been reconciled by God through his son, Jesus Christ, what does our life together look look like um, as sinners, um, as people who have conflicts with one another all the time? What is our goal? It's not just to resolve the conflict. It's to reconcile with our brother or sister in Christ. So with that in mind, let's have a prayer and then I'll read to you uh, the first passage. Uh, let's pray. Forgive our sins, Lord, we implore, that they may trouble us no more. We, too, will gladly those forgive who hurt us by the way they live. Help us in our community to serve each other willingly. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Uh, the first video is going to be Psalm 133. I may put it up on the screen for you, but it's always a good idea to look it up. It's just a short psalm, and it has everything to do with the topic of reconciliation and the, the value um, we should place on our life together. Psalm 133 says, this is a psalm of ascent, by the way. That means this is one of those psalms that would be sung as the pilgrims, as the people headed to the temple. They would ascend up to the temple in Jerusalem. And there were songs that they sang as they, as they processed into Jerusalem and as they processed into the temple. This is one of those songs, all right? So as they... This family here and this family here is, is, is people gathered together, right? Or as they were gathered together. I kind of like the passive version of that because the Holy Spirit calls, gathers, and enlightens. As, as they are gathered together, they value that. They see the value of that. Um, and, and so this, this is one of the Psalms of Ascent. Ready? David writes, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the, the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Just a short little psalm. This is actually one that we have talked about um, before, somewhere down the road, maybe a year ago, there was a video on this particular psalm. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it. I, I, there's a lot of neat images here. The, the oil on the beard of Aaron, uh, the, the dew on Mount Hermon, um, and, and some wonderful things that we consider. I just want you to see the value that is placed on unity. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. And remember, this is as, as, as the children of God are gathered together to go into the temple right? It's a good thing. Aaron, right? Or the, the children of Aaron, the priests are, are there in the temple to meet God's people, um, right? And, and together these sacrifices would take place and, 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 and God would be there too and God would meet them and, and he would meet them in order to give them forgiveness and life, right? And and, and so all of God's people gathering together in the presence of God and the priests were there. And it's just saying this, this is good, right? 
It's, it's not just talking about any kind of unity. It's not just talking about getting along with people. It's talking about us gathering together, us walking together to the divine service and, and into God's presence where he promises to give us forgiveness. And where there's forgiveness, there's life. Right? This, is, uh, this is the blessing, um, life forevermore. So um, unity in the church. Um, Rejoicing together in the in the gathering into God's merciful presence. This is this is the best. This is this is good stuff. This is to be valued. Um, this is to be protected. Um, this is worth making sacrifices for. And um, I commit it to you. Psalm one thirty three. Um, I'm going to do a whole series of videos. You can check them out whenever you want. I'm going to turn this one off. Uh, so we can do the next one. But before I do, another prayer. We pray. God of love, through your Son, you have commanded us to love one another. By the guidance of your word and spirit, deliver us from impenitence and teach us the truth that we might confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and be reconciled to one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.